Well, hey guys, welcome back to Wasting Time in the Woods, the only show on the internet where you can watch me slowly ruining my financial life, one frivolous project at a time. But perhaps not this time. And that's because today we're taking a look at the onboard air system I built for the poor man's land cruiser here. I DIY'd it together for less than 350 bucks and I worked out how to make it all bolt on to my GX460 with a few quick mods. This system should work on any GX or a fifth generation 4Runner, which shares the same basic engine compartment layout. Now I really saved a ton of money by placing the Smitty built at the center of my onboard air system. Of course, it took a lot of trial and error to figure out how to make it all work. And I did end up purchasing like $600 worth of Amazon crap, most of which I had to return. And it did take like a whole works week worth of hours to save maybe like 200 bucks. So. But hey, I've already made all those mistakes, so you don't have to. Stick around to see how you can build your own DIY onboard air system and to smell the salty stench of my regrets, broken dreams. We make those here too. We make those here too. Alright guys, today we are going to take a look at the DIY onboard air system that I built for my GX460 based around a Smittybuilt 2780 air compressor. In this video I'll show you everything you need to know to build a similar system yourself and you'll find links to the specific parts that I use in the description below. Now this project got a little bit more involved so I decided to break it up into two videos. The first video is going to cover the system overview and modifying the Smitty Built to be able to mount it on its side under your hood. In the second video we'll cover the manifold that I built that bolts to the battery J-hook at the front of the engine compartment for future expansion. In the off-road world when you're talking about onboard air you generally have one of two purposes in mind air lockers or airing up tires. Now I'm not planning on adding air lockers, I'm just not that hardcore, but I do love airing down my tires. And when you air down your tires, you gotta get the air back in them before you hit the pavement again. In the video I did on tires and wheels for the trail, I said that airing down your tires makes the sidewall spread out for traction. But that's not really accurate. The majority of the increased traction comes from the elongation of the tread when the tire's footprint flattens out. Thank you very much to Evan Kiefer who left a comment straightening me out on that in the previous video. With that in mind, please feel free to point out all the random crap I get wrong in this video in the comments below and then go fork yourself. I'm, I'm kidding. I actually really do want to hear how I can improve this in the future, so let me know what's in your system or what you think should be in the ultimate DIY onboard air system. With that in mind, let's take a look at my system and its components. Currently, my system is made up of the air compressor, the mounting tray, and the manifold. The manifold is what will allow you to add all the valves and connectors to make the system more functional. Now with my system, everything is stored under the hood. The compressor is permanently mounted in the engine bay. The gauge, valves, and quick connectors are all mounted to a manifold at the front of the engine bay, that's right up here. And the hose with air chuck stores neatly in the space between the battery and the fender. This setup allows me to pop the hood, connect a hose between the manifold and tire, and then control the whole process from the front of the car. I don't have to hold on to anything to keep the air flowing or bend over to constantly check an air gauge that's mounted to the airline. My system is based around a Smittybuilt 2780 air compressor. It's not a compressor you normally find mounted under the hood, but it's about two thirds of the performance of an ARB single for about a third of the cost. In a previous video, I covered the comparison between the ARB and the Smittybilt in detail, as well as how I tapped into the Smittybilt's wiring to add a pressure switch and make it more comparable. Adding a pressure switch allows you to shut the compressor on and off by stopping the airflow. You'll need to do that to make this project work. If you don't add a pressure switch and you let your compressor run with the airflow closed, well, something like this might happen. Now I was a little vague in that previous video on the wiring, so I'll try and clarify that a bit here. To add a pressure switch, you'll need to remove the plastic cap that the rocker switch is mounted to on the end of the compressor. That requires removing four hex head screws, as well as the bracket that the output tube is connected to. Behind the plastic cap, you'll find the compressor's wiring and relay. Cut one of the two black wires connected to the rocker switch. The f is this? It's a warhead, Hoover. You can defuse it, right? Are you kidding me? Look at all this crap. There's like a million wires in here. 
I don't think it actually matters which one because adding a pressure switch, you're just adding another low amp switch that opens up the circuit when the pressure gets to 100 PSI and then closes it again when it gets down to 70 PSI. I did it on the hot side of the switch, which is this wire here. Here's a wiring diagram of this MIDI belt. And here is how I modified it to add the pressure switch. Now, if you're still confused after watching that last video and these additional details, well, you probably shouldn't be taking DIY electrical advice from a dude like me on YouTube. All right, if you survive the pressure switch mod, you'll need to mount the compressor. The Smitty Build is designed to be mounted vertically, but to make it fit under the hood, I mounted mine on its side horizontally. In order to do that, you'll have to remove the tray that it came mounted to and rotate the brackets around 90 degrees. Make sure you don't lose the vibration isolating bushings, bolts, or standoff sleeves since you'll need those to mount it to your new engine compartment tray. If you don't mount it on a vibration isolating pad, it'll probably look like something like this every time you turn it on. Now, I wish I could say that rotating the brackets around 90 degrees was as easy as rotating the brackets around 90 degrees. But unfortunately, the compressor piston caused the brackets to stick out about two millimeters too far for the holes to align. So I had to get the Dremel out and shave off a bit of material on the one bracket. If you're looking at the switch end of the motor, like this shot here, you'll want to move the brackets clockwise. That'll put the handle of the outlet of the compressor towards the front of the engine bay. You'll also need to insert the bolt and rubber bushing that sits under the piston into the bracket before you reattach the bracket. Otherwise, there's no way to get the bolt in between the bracket and the piston housing once it's mounted to the tray. I found that out the hard way. I find out most things the hard way. Just ask my dad. Now, in the previous video, I converted the Smitty Built's closed flow metric fittings to quarter inch MPT open flow fittings. I also added a stainless steel leader hose at that time. This is a leader hose. These are leader hosen. You're going to want to choose a leader hose for this particular application. Sorry, Charles. Check out the links below for the special quarter inch MPT to metric coupler that I used to make the conversions. I also added a three-way fitting at the compressor to accommodate the pressure switch. For the permanent install under the hood, I changed the leader hose to a 20 inch check valve leader hose. The check valve hose will keep the air from leaking back out through the piston and causing the compressor to cycle on and off every 30 seconds or so. I also put a quick disconnect on the end of the leader hose to be able to connect it to my manifold while maintaining the ability to easily bypass the manifold or change the battery in the field. Okay, now that we've got it ready to install, we've got to figure out how to mount it. Now, there are a ton of mounting trays available for fifth generation 4Runners, and a few of them will work for the GX460 as well. Most of them go for about 150 bucks. Now, I'm no fabricator, but 150 bucks for $10 worth of laser cut metal with two bins in it, it didn't seem like a good value to me. That's when I found Power Trays. Power Trays makes beautiful engine compartment mounting trays out of aluminum for all sorts of vehicles. They're also significantly cheaper than a lot of the options on the market. They're beautifully designed and executed with camfered edges and all the hardware you need to mount it cleanly. Now, they have a bunch of trays pre-drilled for typical installs like Switch Pros panels or ARB compressors, but they didn't happen to have anything specifically configured for a cheap bastard trying to DIY up a Smitty built install. Go figure. When I reached out to see if they would help me figure out which one would work best, I got a guy named Maverick Bain. Maverick's also the owner of Power Trays, and after watching a couple of my videos, he still wanted to help me. <laughs> Inexplicably. Most of their trays are designed to have the hardware undermounted to give more clearance so you can use both the top and the bottom of the tray as a mounting surface. Since the Smitty Build is a bit taller than the ARBs that are normally mounted to these trays, Maverick suggested that we try a new tray that he had developed for the 460 with the hardware on top, more like some of the typical mounting solutions you see on the market. The tray mounts to the upper inner fender and the support leg mounts to the lower inner fender. Now it's a bit tricky to get the lower leg mounted because you've got to get your hands behind the tire and the shock mount to get the nuts on. You might want to find somebody with small hands to help you with this part of the install. You're going to find two 3 8 inch studs. Now be careful, there's a lot of sharp edges back there, all right? Are you sure we're supposed to be doing this? Your mom's not here. 
Next, I marked and drilled the mounting holes. The hole for the bolt under the piston was obscured, so I had to kind of triangulate using a T-square to drill that last one. Finally, I uninstalled the tray, remounted the compressor, and reinstalled the whole thing. Along the way, I had also cut the alligator clips off the compressor and replaced those with ring terminals that I screwed directly onto the battery post. I may add an auxiliary power system at some point, but for now, just bolting them onto the battery post with the inline fuse should work fine. In the next video, we'll take a look at how I finished off the system with a fancy manifold that bolts right onto my battery post. Now, before we wrap up, I want to give a huge shout out to Maverick and Powertrace for helping me out on this project. If you guys need to mount air or electrical accessories under your hood, please check out Powertrace solutions for your 460, 470, 4Runner, or FJ. Check out the link in the description below and use the code WASTINGTIME to get 10% off. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you out there.